From time to time I need to make up battery packs using usually 18650 type lithium cells which I recover from old laptops and various places. To date I've always had to solder them together which has led to some criticism, I may say, of people leaving comments like, "Oh, why don't you use a spot welder? Well, I only do this maybe once or twice a year normally, and a hundred or so euros for a spot welder. I just can't justify it. And then I saw this board on my favourite Chinese emporium, which purports to be a spot welder, but it's less than $20. Comes with a random kit of parts, as per normal, no instructions whatsoever. Let's put it together and see if we can blow ourselves up. The unit is assembled now. Nothing really much to do apart from making up the leads with these lugs on. Putting in the little speaker, it's positive indicated there and on the board. And fitting the capacitor, that's clearly indicated on the board, which is the negative side. Although there are two holes here, it seems to make sense to bolt both the wires together there. On the positive side, I have a traditional battery clamp, but I'm not overly keen on the idea of having something bolted to the battery, which I can't disconnect should something go terribly wrong. Therefore I've elected on the negative side to use a crocodile clip. We'll have to see in practice how that works out. Clearly it's going to be drawing significant amounts of current. As you can see I've just temporarily wired the thing up to my bench power supply to make sure at least the thing powers up and I can try and work out what the button is supposed to do. One last thing, there was already a line of solder along here by the FETs and I've gone over that again and added some more solder and indeed the same on the back here. I have actually seen variants of this board that have a copper bar along that trace as well. Switching on my bench power supply then, clearly the probes are not going to be touching at this point. There was a brief blip as the thing turned on. We press the button. Got a solid green light and now the light is flashing intermittently and an accompanying beep from the speaker. Press and hold the button again. It's now changed into a mode where it's giving like a, a double blip. So I guess rather than changing the level of power as such, it's just firing twice instead of once. I think I might put my oscilloscope on there to see what's going on later. Pushing the button again. We're now getting three little blips. And finally it turns red. I think this is a, like a manual mode. So in this mode, when we touch the two probes together, after a short delay we get a little blip. I guess it's time to check it out for real. I'm going to test using this old battery which is no good. Let's see what size the supplied metal strip is. So that's coming in at four thousandths of an inch which is about 0.1 of a millimeter. I sourced some material myself and this is just over six thou and that is about point one five of a millimeter. Let's try with the supplied stuff first. Safety squints are a good idea I think. Connect the battery up, press and hold. So we're on the single pulse here. Let's hold the strip down with one probe. Here goes nothing. It certainly is working. Let's see if we can pull that off. That required quite a lot of effort, but it hasn't torn the strip. Let's go up a tad. Now on the two blips. Again, that is definitely stuck on there. Let's try and pull it off. Definitely given more resistance on, on that try. Let's bump it up to the three pulses. Let's try pulling that one off. That 
it's definitely in increasing the uh, the strength of the bond each time. I can't actually pull that off. It's just about going, and we can see clearly on the end of the battery there the marks left. We click it once more. We're now into what I think is like the the manual mode. Bringing the contact down now. So yes, that's the, the manual mode. And again, a, a very strong bond uh, appears to be as strong as the three. In fact, I'm having difficulty moving that at all. I'll have to get the pliers on that one. Yes, that was definitely the strongest one. And that has actually torn the strip when I've removed it. Let's try the thicker strip now. See how the single pulse copes with the 0.15. It's definitely crimped it. But the bond is not terribly strong. Well, that one was quite exciting. Not quite sure what happened there. Let's try that again. That is quite weak. FETs aren't even getting warm. Let's try the three pulses. So with the three pulses, that's a much stronger bond, but definitely not as strong as with the thinner material. Let's try the manual mode. Not sure if it makes any difference whether you hold these probes sort of more, more flat with the material. So in the manual mode, it is a stronger bond again, but I could still pull it off with my hands rather than using the pliers. Definitely works best with the supplied 0.1 strip. As promised then, a quick look with the oscilloscope and what we're seeing at the moment is the single pulse and that's measuring 2.5 milliseconds. This is on two volts per division, so no surprise that the 12 volts there. If we now move it to the next power level, we can see that the pulse width has increased and it's measuring here on the screen 3.44 milliseconds. So in terms of the power, all it's doing is applying the pulse for longer. We go now to the th third position, we see it increase again, and now it's measuring some 5.78 milliseconds. No doubt, like me, you'll be curious to know what the manual mode does. So now we've got the red light on there. If I touch the probes together without electrocuting myself, we can see there it is a longer pulse measuring 6.74 milliseconds. So to get the strongest bond, you're going to probably want to use it in the manual mode. That was interesting. Finally, I'd just like to revisit using the thicker strip. As you may or may not be able to hear, it's on the automatic but highest frequency. What I'm going to do is just to use the very edge, like a point. It may even be better if these were fashioned into a, into a point. I've also cleaned off the surface of this particular cell as well. I'm going to apply quite a degree of force as well and give it a couple of goes there. And again, let's see now. Well, it still pulls off, 
but it gave quite a degree of resistance. I think that that would, in normal circumstances, be more than adequate. In conclusion then, does it work? Well, yes, it certainly does. It's good enough for the use to which I would put it, just making up some packs uh, occasionally. How it will hold up over time, we will have to see. All in all, for under $20 US, I don't think you can fault it.